UFC Fight Night, Rosenstrike versus Alameda. That is the event coming up this weekend, taking place in the Apex in Las Vegas. It's a little bit of a mid card, so I didn't really go through and break down all of the prelim cards this video. I'm just gonna break down the main card. To be honest, there's a couple decent fights in the prelims. Some guys that I think are pretty intriguing. Natan Levy, for example. Um, you got Carl Williams, who's making some noise in the heavyweight division. Brian Battle, tough winner. So um, definitely fights worth watching. Just I didn't really see a point in breaking down all of them. They didn't quite pique my interest enough. So... Um, I know this card has been sort of sparking a bit of debate what, around should the UFC focus on having more events every single week, just about like they've been doing recently, or should they focus on quality over quantity? So let me know your thoughts below. Personally, uh, sa my Saturdays kind of have been, have been revolving around watching this stuff, so I'm more quantity over quality I don't really know what to do with myself on some of these weekends if I don't got the fights going on so I don't know if you guys can relate but for me uh, more is always better and certainly I think some of these main events need work here Rosenstrike versus Almeida headlining an event is pretty insane to me I mean Clearly, they're trying to set up Almeida, I'm thinking, to be a, another potential star in the heavyweight division. We'll get into that more further on in this video, um, but that's the only really justification I can see for them having these guys headline a card. So, no disrespect to either of those fighters, but let's, let's be real. That's, that should not be a headlining event. But nonetheless, let's get right into this breakdown. I'm gonna go through the main card, share my thoughts, picks, starting off with Tim Means versus Alex Morono. Tim Means is plus 185 in this fight. He's two and three in his last five bouts. Alex Morono is four and one in his last five and is a minus 215 favorite in this one. I'm going to be going with Alex Morono in this. Uh, honestly, Tim Means has not looked great as of late. He's older, uh, to say the least. He's 39 years old. Certainly has to be on the tail end of his career here. Um, I know he's got a gym. I think he's got opened up. So I'm sure he'll probably pivot more to coaching than fighting himself. Uh, in the near future, but uh, Tim Means is a guy who got completely outworked by Kevin Holland uh, two fights ago and then did not look great in his most recent fight versus uh, Max Griffin, I believe it was, so he seems to be kind of dropping off in his ability as of late, uh, which is unfortunate to see, but it happens to everyone. I have thought all athletes, uh, certainly athletes who have been in the game as long as he has. Alex Morono, on the other hand, uh, did put together a nice win streak and looked like he was going to coast to a fifth win in a row versus Santiago Ponzinibbio before getting knocked out in the third round. Um, Morono is a solid striker. Uh, he comes and puts the pace on people doesn't really find a knockout too often, but he's usually able to strike his way to a win. He's pretty solid when it comes to brawling, and I think he's just all around on the feet, a very solid fighter, and is very solid all around. Tim Means' keys to victory in this one would be to take it to the ground, but I think he doesn't really have the gas tank for that too much, and if he fails it, if he does, get Morono to the ground. I don't think he'll be able to keep him there. And uh, I think Morono will piece him up on the feet. So Morono is the pick. Uh, I think he'll get a decision victory. I don't see him putting Tim Means away. 
but it certainly wouldn't shock me. So Morono is the play. Uh, we'll see. I, I think it, uh, a decision's coming, but if Tim Means, you know, isn't really coming in fully prepared to, to win, which I'm not, I, I would expect him to come in in shape and everything, but if this is sort of Tim Means on his way out, not really looking to compete as much, um, then he could find himself getting finished by Morono, who's probably probably determined to get back in that win column. So next up on the main card is Carlos Olberg versus Ior Poteria. Poteria. Carlos Olberg is a guy who I am really excited for in the light heavyweight division, a guy who I've had uh, high aspirations for, I guess. I think the guy is one of the most underappreci underappreciated guys in the division, and he is a sort of black horse pick f for me to be champion of this division by the end of 2024. Um, I think the guy's got a lot of star qualities to him. Uh, Skill-wise, he's a brilliant striker, has a 19-2 kickboxing record, um, and just a great athletic career. I think he was a semi-pro rugby player growing up. Comes from a fighting family. His dad was a boxer, uh, or so John Anik said in his Dana White Contender Series debut. And... Uh, Olberg's a guy who got the KO win to get his UFC contract. Already had a little bit of name power because he trains at City Kickboxing with, obviously, Izzy and Volk. So I think they've sort of been putting in the word to the UFC prior to his arrival. Look out for this dude. Like, he's, he's legit. And if, if they're saying that at City Kickboxing, which is... You know, you can put that on top three lists of best gyms, certainly in the UFC. Um, it's, it's high praise. So skill-wise, I think he's got that star power. And, you know, I'm not afraid to say it. The dude's just like a great-looking guy. And I think you can prove that. Uh, like, I think you can statistically prove that by him being like a – big social media star in Australia or in New Zealand where he was like asked to be on The Bachelor and stuff so this guy is I feel like that's sort of a recipe for the UFC to want to promote this guy and I think they may have picked Potieria as a guy who he can get a finish against Potieria as a solid fighter he just finished the corpse of Shogun Hua in his most recent fight. I don't know why they scheduled that. Two and one in the UFC, but I don't think he can hang with Olberg striking. Uh, I think he'll get finished here, and Olberg will start to catapult himself to that top 15 conversation and set himself up to make a run at the title by the end of next year. So I think Olberg gets him out of there real quick. All of his KOs in the UFC have come in the first round. I don't expect this to be any different. So Olberg, round one KO, is the pick. And when he's champion at the end of 2024, uh, don't say I didn't tell you so. So moving on, D-Rod versus Ian Gary. Daniel Rodriguez is the plus 245 underdog in this fight. Ian Gary is a big favorite at minus 300. This fight taking place in the welterweight division. Um, D-Rod, solid striker. He's usually more of a boxer than anything. Uses his hands well, but he does mix in kicks a bit. Ian Gary, on the other hand, is a very skilled striker. Uh, undefeated in the UFC and in his career. Coming off of a big KO victory versus Song Keenan where he got rot, I mean, he got hit by one of the hardest shots you'll really see. Flush, uh, I think it was like a right hand that put him down. And I, I was shocked that he was able to survive that. And I think in that fight, he really proved that he's got that dog in him that he hadn't really had to dig deep down uh, previously in his previous fights. So 
that was a very telling victory. Um, and I think Ian Gary will get the win in this one. Um, he can sometimes be a bit of a slower starter. He's good at pacing himself uh, as well and usually can find his rhythm. Like in his most previous fight, he really didn't start finding the mark uh, in volume until the third round against Song Kinan. And once he did, I, he got a finish pretty quickly thereafter. So I uh, anticipate that this fight will be pretty back and forth, um, more tactical striking matchup, but Ian Gary will find his range later on in the fight, and I think he gets a finish in the third round of Daniel Rodriguez, um, which will be a very impressive victory for Ian Gary. Daniel Rodriguez is a heck of a fighter, but I think Ian Gary is just a little more skilled on the feet, and uh, and that's why I, I anticipate Ian Gary finding a finish here. The co-main event, which I probably would have put as the main event over the current main event, um, is Anthony Smith versus Johnny Walker. This fight's a pick 'em. Anthony Smith is three and two in his last five, as is Johnny Walker. Anthony Smith coming off of a loss versus uh, Ankalaev, in which I believe he got hurt in that fight, which led to him getting finished because he just lost all of his mobility, shot for a takedown, and got put on his back, and it was basically over from there. Johnny Walker, on the other hand, has been seeing a bit of a renaissance in his career. He had that infamous try to do the worm, fuck his shoulder up situation, and uh, was not looking great after that. Suffered two losses in a row, but now he's coming off of two wins in a row against uh, Nikolai Negamurianu and... Um, and that other dude who just always loses every fight. Um, oh, Kutalaba. Kutalaba actually just got a win, so shout out to him. But he finished Kutalaba, Kutalaba and uh, Paul Craig, I should say. Did Johnny Walker. But, um, yeah, Johnny Walker, big, powerful dude. He's certainly going to dwarf Anthony Smith in this one, who's... I think I, you could say he's on the smaller side for this two light heavyweight division, but Anthony Smith, what he lacks in size, he makes up for in a lot of ring experience. He's been in there as many times as anyone in the division, really, especially now that Glover's gone. Anthony Smith, you know, he I think he just has a knack for finding a way to win. And with a guy like Johnny Walker, who's got a lot of weaknesses, he's kind of lumbers around not the most coordinated he's got a lot of power because he's so big but he also can't really take a punch very well which also gives anthony smith that uh ko opportunity that i don't you that as of late he hasn't really been a bit of a as much of a ko threat so with all that working against johnny walker i expect anthony smith to get the win in this one uh certainly if he can get Johnny Walker to the ground or pressure him up against the cage. I think he's just going to be too crafty for him. Um, but this was a very well made fight, I must say. I, I uh, it's it, this one was a really tough one to pick for me. So it should be exciting. Um, Johnny Walker's all of his fights end up being pretty exciting. So looking forward to that. Uh, and finally, we have our main event here, Jorginho Rosenstrike versus Jelton Almeida. Rosenstrike is the heavy underdog in this one at plus 390, coming in uh, two and three of his last five fights. Almeida, on the other hand, undefeated in the UFC on a 4-0, uh, on a four-fight win streak uh, upon his Dana White Contender Series win. Jelton Almeida, as I touched on a little earlier, he's a guy who it seems the UFC is trying to prop up a little bit. Uh, certainly evidenced by them give, giving him a main event spot um, 
for a dude that I don't think anyone really knows a whole lot about him. Uh, he's a guy who is looks like a science experiment, um, probably on all the sauce that, you know, just the best stuff you can get in Brazil because the dude's, his traps have traps. He's just like ridiculously jacked. So, but that being said, he's, he's smaller for the division. Um, I'll be interested to see what he weighs in at. Um, he's been in that 230 range, which is definitely small for the heavyweight division. And him being a guy who's a bit reliant on grappling, I think he's a somewhat capable striker, but he's going in there trying to take you down and work you on the ground. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how he does that against a guy like Rosenstrike, uh, who's somewhat athletic, certainly compared to all the other heavyweights that Almeida has fought. And Rosenstrike is probably going to have a, at least a 30 pound weight advantage on Almeida. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure how he's going to fare trying to take down that big belly. Um, but if I had to guess, I think Jailton will find a way to take him down, in which case I think this fight's pretty much over. Um, Rosenstrike, if he can keep it standing, I would give him a pretty big edge in this one. I think if, I think he's better on the feet, certainly than Almeida. Um, and I don't really think it's that close. Uh, Almeida has not really proven himself as a striker in much of any capacity in the UFC. But at the end of the day, Almeida has been able to take down every single guy they've put in front of him up to this point. And Rosenstrike is certainly no grappling expert. That's just not his game. So I think this is going to be another quick win for Jelton Almeida. He'll get a finish certainly in the first half of this fight, probably within the first two rounds over Rosenstrike. It's really just a piss poor matchup for Jarzinho. Uh, I would have much rather than put him up against another striker in the division. Um, and likewise, I would have liked to see Almeida up against a, a better grappler like a Tibura who's he's got a fight scheduled with Aspinall but a guy of that nature who actually has like some wrestling background and grappling ability to see how Almeida fares against trying to take down one of these bigger guys who are competent on the ground but that's neither here nor there um the guy he's got in front of him Jarzinho Rosenstrike is lacking in the grappling department and I think that's all you really need to look at at this one so Jelton Almeida I'm looking for him to get the finish in this one those odds are a bit crazy minus 500 is shocking to see for a dude who hasn't really fought any high level UFC competition but this matchup is just too ideal for him and um and that's why he'll, he'll get a finish here quickly. So that's the main event broken down for you. Let me know if you agree, disagree. Um, do you think this card is good? Do you think it sucks? It's Most of you are probably going to be leaning it being on the sucky side. But whatever. I'm spewing. It's late. I got to wake up early tomorrow. That is the breakdown. And I will catch you all for next week's breakdown.